Good morning, Audacious Church. It's a joy to be with you this morning and to be able to just take some time to share a few thoughts, uh, which hopefully will be an encouragement to you this week uh, and as you live for Jesus day by day. In all of my years as a uh, uh, a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, I can honestly say that I've never known such a time as this. A time when, as a nation, and indeed on the planet, we've been troubled with a pandemic that has just rocked the world around us. And there are so many other things going on, and the news is really good news when we switch on our TV set or pick up a paper. But I just want to encourage us today to look at those situations that are around us in a different way. I want to think for a few moments about the prophet Nehemiah and the way that he responded to the challenges that were, were around him in his day and in his generation. One of the big issues for him was the broken down walls of Jerusalem and the sadness that that brought to him and to the people of God in that day. And you know, right into that situation, God spoke to Nehemiah and he spoke because Nehemiah's first response was to take his concern to the Lord. It says in Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 14 that he cried out, hear us, O God. And what a better thing could we do than to cry out to God in times of trouble, in times of desperation and say, hear us, O God, we need you, we need your help. Uh, as we consider his story, we can see that there's great power in prayer. And this should always be our priority when we are facing situations that are difficult. It's not just for difficult times, of course. It's our way of uh, communicating and developing relationship with our loving Heavenly Father. You know, when there is trouble, the temptation is always to target the opposition. And sometimes it's to physically oppose the opposition in a similar way to which we have been targeted. Uh, Nehemiah had to deal with Sanballat and Tobiah, uh, who were determined on hindering the work of God in stopping the walls being rebuilt and fulfilling that which God had spoken to Nehemiah and his children to do. I love a quote that comes from Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King, but Martin Luther of the 15th century, who said, prayer is a strong wall and fortress of the church. It is a godly weapon. And that's true this morning. Prayer is our powerful weapon. Martin Luther, the, re the re reformer, got it right. It's a godly weapon. It's something that we can use in order to invoke the help of heaven in the situations that we find ourselves in. Not only did Nehemiah pray, but he also spurred the people of God into action. In chapter 4 and verse 6 of Nehemiah, we read these words. So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height, for the people worked with all their heart. It would be all too easy for us to pray and do nothing. But that's not what we're encouraged to do this morning. What we're encouraged to do by the word of God is to put action to our prayers, to give beat to our prayers. In Nehemiah's time, there was a job for every single person to do in the rebuilding of the walls. And you know, friends, it's no different this morning. There's something for each and every one of us to do as we seek to see God's kingdom extended, as we seek to see his church built in our locations, in our localities and indeed across the face of the world that we live in. It's true that young and old have something that they can do, whether you're a novice in the faith or whether you're mature in the faith, there is a part for you to play. As followers of Christ, we need to learn to be counter-cultural. As I said before, the easiest thing to do would be to rise up in opposition against the enemy in a physical way to throw back all that the enemy throws at us. But we're not called to return evil for evil, but evil with good. We're called to be a people who will challenge the needs that are around us by rising in response to them, to do what we can do to help the lost, to bring hope to the hopeless, to bring comfort to those who are suffering and giving of our skills and of our time 
of our finance is a way in which we can do that. And God will show you the way that you can reach out and the way that you can move into action in order to see the kingdom built and the kingdom extended. The scientists have taken the names of the Greek alphabet in order to name the variants of COVID that we've all heard so much about over this last almost two years now. Um, they tell us that there was the Delta variant and now they're telling us that there is the Omicron variant and there's some dispute about whether it's Omicron or Omicron. My background is Greek, so I'm going with Omicron. Um, and even with these variants of this virus that are named that have driven people into such fear and despair, I want to encourage you today because there's another two Greek letters which are really, really important. And the first one is Alpha and the second one is Omega. And the Bible gives those titles to our God and Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. He is the Alpha and the Omega. It tells us in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 13. He is the beginning and the end. You know, there's nothing today that takes our God by surprise. There's nothing that uh, he doesn't know about. There's nothing that he is unaware of. And as we remember that and we take hold of that, his title, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, then we will have a sense of God's hand on every situation that we are facing. We will know that he is in control and that nothing is going to happen that he doesn't allow to happen because he's in charge. He is the beginning. He is the end. Let's reflect today on God's faithfulness and his goodness, giving us hope for the future and a real sense of expectancy for our daily lives. Let's be like Nehemiah and the people of God who, who move forward in prayer and in action to see God's purposes fulfilled in our day and in our generation. I hope that you have a great day. And it's thanks again from me, Andrew Georgiou at Audacious Sheffield. God bless you.